For frictional games, Amnesia Rebirth proves to be more than an appropriate title, but one that carries meaning in its narrative and design. Connected to the events of 2010's Amnesia the Dark Descent, but able to be played standalone, our return to Frictional's world of ancient monsters and curses brings with it a formula of survival horror the studio helped establish and continued all the way up to 2015's Soma, their most recent game. With Rebirth, there's a lot here fans will probably recognize. A thought-provoking story that begins with a character who's lost their memory, monsters that can only be ran or hidden from, a screen that warps when the protagonist is scared, and puzzles that act as reprieves from monster encounters. Darkness isn't only creepy, it's dangerous. Staying in it too long increases your fear, so you'll still be scrounging around for matches to light your path and oil to keep your lantern lit. Rebirth diverts from its predecessors through a heavier focus on story and set pieces, striking an interesting balance between a narrative-driven experience and one that requires constant player engagement. Playthroughs begin with a message. This game should not be played to win. Immerse yourself in the story and world. Fear and darkness are your enemies. This sentiment of not trying to win may sound somewhat strange, but it's a sentiment that becomes more apparent the further you get, and it's good advice. The impression I came away with was that friction doesn't want you to think too hard, and instead allow yourself to naturally interact with the path they've laid before you. In creating that vision, Frictional takes some risks, some of which work and others I continue to be conflicted with. Set in 1937 and beginning in the Algerian desert, Tazi Trianon awakens in a crashed plane. Pregnant, alone, and with much of her memory gone, Tazi's only choice is to follow her colleague's trail, discover what happened to them, and in the process regain her memory. Throughout its collectible texts and scattered notes, Rebirth tells us that without hope there is no fear, a paraphrase of famous words from Dutch philosopher Baruch Spinoza, which Rebirth takes as kind of an unofficial motto. Rebirth's story is one of of parenthood and endurance, of people and a society ravaged by fear and cruelty. In this world, fear is not just an emotion, but a catalyst. Those consumed by fear turn into monsters themselves. Tazi is afflicted by this same curse. As her fear increases, images flash on screen and you'll hear voices and unsettling sounds. If overwhelmed or captured by a monster, Tazi loses control. She blacks out, flees, and eventually regains consciousness in a different place. Tazzy finds hope against this fear in her unborn child. When her baby kicks, comforting it calms Tazzy down, even when submerged in total darkness or hunted by a monster. This system enriches Rebirth's narrative, a metaphor of fear as a force that can turn normal people hostile. And Rebirth does a nice job believably crafting a character who's constantly on the edge of losing her mind. I suspect this was a tricky thing, making their protagonist a pregnant woman who's thrown into a world of terror and danger, but Frictional executes it tastefully. Tazzy isn't a silent protagonist, she's aware something is happening to her, that she's losing control, and this manifests itself in dialogue and how she reacts to the world around her. What? What the hell is wrong with me? This isn't why. How did I get here? The catch with Tazzy's blackouts, mechanically, is that you wake up in a random spot afterward, meaning blackouts can skip small portions of the game. And of course, each time Tazzy blacks out, you'll also have to watch the resulting cutscene and wait through a somewhat lengthy wake-up animation where Tazzy looks at her arms and gets up off the ground. If you're caught by monsters multiple times in the course of a few minutes, what is an interesting and subversive way of telling a story becomes clunky and even unintentionally silly. Frictional takes the risk that players will, more often than not, be able to sneak by monsters and keep Tazzy's fear down without blacking out too often. If you're able to do that, I think their risk mostly pays off. If not, it can feel redundant and pretty frustrating. Run and Hide Horror has been due a makeover for some time. Not to say the style is bad, only that, at least in my estimation, it's yet to undergo a substantial evolution, with titles like Alien Isolation perhaps being the exception. For Frictional, as well written as Soma's existential sci-fi story was, it utilized much of the same horror tactics Amnesia the Dark Descent employed. Tactics like a plotting protagonist, or monsters that drive you insane just by looking at them, resulting in an experience that occasionally felt dated and superfluous. 
Amnesia Rebirth does some of the same, but trims the experience down. It isn't the substantial evolution run and hide horror needs, but I also think it's clear that wasn't Frictional's goal in the first place. Rebirth is enjoyable and meaningful, but fans waiting for a horror experience closer to that of the original Amnesia, or something larger and more elaborate, will have to keep waiting.